Good morning. Good morning again, everybody. My name is Jeff Kampkin. I'm a adjunct professor at University of Western Australia and uh, Griffith University in Australia and visiting professor at the um, National Laboratory of Civil Engineering in Portugal. And together with uh, Elisa Relli, who you heard from just a moment ago from IHP, UNESCO, um, I'll be chairing this session for the next uh, two hours. As I'm also a real life outside UNESCO, I'm myself an expert on groundwater resources and my PhD in 89 was on hydrogeochemistry. And, uh, and definitely, I'm also a member of the IAH. So really, I feel, I feel at home. Yeah, that's great. Um, so we have six speakers. And uh, we have one change to the, to the agenda. The second last presentation will be changed. We'll get to that later. Uh, speakers will have 15 minutes and time for one, one question, maybe two. Um, and we'll just ask you to just come up, do your presentation, stay for a question, and then return to your seat so you can see the rest of the presentations better. So um, the first presentation was to be a, a good friend of mine, Dave Tuttle. Unfortunately, he's not well. Um, and uh, Keith Esplin will um, present on behalf of co-authors. So thank you, Keith. Keith is presenting on implementing incentivized managed aquifer recharge on a basin scale. And please introduce yourself and, and co-authors. Okay, thank you. thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Sorry that Dave couldn't be here. He had been planning this for two or three years and very much wanted to come. It's our first opportunity to be involved. Um, I, I'll show you in a minute the, who's the members of our group. We're doing private aquifer recharge in Idaho, and I'm the manager of, the, of an organization that is a private organization that's conducting the recharge. Let's see. Okay. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the United States, Idaho is up in the northwest corner. We're a very mountain. We have a lot of mountains and a lot of high altitude semi-arid deserts but we do get a lot of uh, snow from our mountains that, that uh, feeds into the rivers. The um, area that I'm going to be, we are located in is in eastern Idaho in the Snake River Plain, which is, a, which is a, our main, most of the people in Idaho, I think 80, 90 percent, live within 50 miles of the Snake River. It's where the lifeblood of the state comes. To give you a little bit of background on agriculture in Idaho, we have approximately 1,214,000 hectares of irrigated lands in the south, there's some dry land that's not irrigated near the mountains, and in the north there's more that's not irrigated. Approximately half of the irrigation comes from surface sources, from rivers, and, and half comes from uh, groundwater. The, um, of the surface irrigated originally started in about 1880s when the settlers were settling the area. Uh, of course, it was originally all flood irrigated, but has been gradually converted to, to uh, sprinkler irrigation which is probably 90% now of the, of the surface water usage. We have storage for approximately 5 billion cubic meters, which is about half of the surface water that we use in a year. So we, that's one problem we have, is we don't have enough storages to capture all the, of the water that we could use to, in, in dry years. Um, of that uh, 5, billion cubic, 5 billion cubic meters of, of storage, Approximately half of that is fed from springs from the aquifers. Our, our, our water supplies are very connected between the surface water and subsurface, and it is conjunctively managed now, too. Um, so when we have good supplies in the rivers, we have better supplies in the aquifers. In dry years, we have no surplus left, but in, in wet years, on average, if you take all the dry and wet years, we have um, we have one, I have to translate everything from acre feet. I don't think hardly anyone here would understand acre feet, but we have rough approximately um, 2.2 billion cubic meters of water that flows past our system that we can't capture. We don't have capacity to store. So the topics I'll be discussing is why, was privately, de why privately developed managed aquifer recharge what is the Recharge Development Corporation, an aquifer recharge unit, how does it work, is it legal, where are the eligible basins, and where can this happen? 
First off, why privately manage ACA for recharge? In, in Idaho, in recent years, as we've started conjunctively managing surface and subsurface waters, that it was recognized that the state had over-appropriated waters in the aquifer. And it's not that we don't have a lot of aquifer water, it's that the water flows from the aquifer into the rivers and was, it was making the supply short for some of the surface water users. So the state is currently doing a lot of, of recharge too. Uh, they're doing approximately 370 million cubic meters of mar per year. But that's just for the good of the aquifer and not for any individual to use. So as we know, water is pumped out of the ground into a spigot, whether it's for irrigation or domestic use. We have natural water rights. In, in, uh, United, in the Western United States, the water is all owned by the states, but our Constitution guarantees that, the, that water, can be, water rights can be secured as long as they're available, water's available for individuals or organizations to use. So water flows from the water rights through up the well. And in dry years, we have storage, which we call ARUs, which I will explain, that, that where the water can flow from storage and then, and then finish supplying the water. This is the first dam. That, this is actually in the state of Wyoming. It was the first dam built on the Snake River for, for, uh, to capture water for irrigation. Uh, there was a lake here originally. This is Jackson Lake. Uh, currently, now it's in the Teton National Park. And in 1906, the farmers in Idaho built a, a log uh, dam there, a small dam to capture water for storage. And it was over the years modified until this is the dam that's there today. So we had storage in a surface reservoir. You built a dam on top to capture more water. So we're doing the same thing in the ground. Recharge Development Co Corporation has developed a, a what's called an aquifer recharge unit. And then we have an incentivized managed aquifer recharge program that is self-perpetuating and can be re multiplied throughout the world. These are different members of the board of directors, includes farmer, uh, hydrologists, engineers, um, attorneys, and others that, uh, that work to develop this organization. The basic unit that we're working with for marketing is called an aquifer recharge unit. An aquifer recharge unit represents one acre foot of space in the aquifer. An acre foot is an acre of ground one foot deep. So but it, it's equivalent to 1,233 cubic meters of space. So this is, think of, uh, we build a reservoir to capture water. You buy a, an ARU to capture water in the aquifer virtually. So there's a, another visual of, of how it would look, just a square unit to measure, and it could be in, in your regions a different, to make it make more sense in a, a metric system, could be a thousand or whatever number you wanted it to be, aquifer recharge unit. So just like we did in Jackson Lake, we had natural groundwater, we, 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 we build ARUs above that to, to uh, and then, and then uh, use a MAR site to, to put water in the ARU. And the way this works is the those that need additional irrigation water, and what, what has happened in Idaho is that through conjunctive management, the, the most recent, in, in, in the West, of Western United States, the, the oldest rights are the first in priority. And so the, the latest rights, maybe since 1970 to current, are the ones that would be cut off first if there's a shortage of water. So sometimes, so through conjunctive management, if the supplies in the rivers is low, then the groundwater users get cut off. And so those that are short or, or need more additional water can buy ARUs and th their investment helps build the system just like an investment in the reservoirs built the storage system above. Um, so what, the way it works is they'll buy, they'll invest in an ARU, then there's a small fee every year they'll pay to run, to manage, to run the system, and then the organization works to fill the ARU with, with MAR and, and transfers it to the owners that have bought it. And currently we have farmers, uh, city uh, developers, uh, groundwater districts that have bought ARUs in order to, to have a supply of water. And our, the, the cost of the ARUs is far less than it would be to, to invest in a s new surface storage. So now does the process work and is it legal? I'm not gonna talk about much about the legal. I have a, uh, an associate that's gonna be talking about that uh, tomorrow. But uh, the Develop, Recharge Development Corporation has, has a patent pending system 
of filling ARUs through MAR, transferring them through accounting, and then uh, keeping track of what is used, and then, and then delivering those, the water to the ARUs of those purchasers. We also work with a company called Teton Technology Water Resource Management to help automate the system. This last year, all, um, all wells in the state were required to have meters on them uh, for the first time, and so that, that finished, that project finished this last year, so now all the, the wells, at least in southern Idaho, have, have meters. And so what they do, what Teton Technology is doing, is gradually connecting each well so that the, we have automated data gathering telemetry. It saves time and money because the, the information is transferred uh, automatically to the, to the managers without having to send people out in the field to gather the information. So it provides real-time water usage and reach charge for forecasting and allocation development. It also, the system also calculates assessments for even complex assessment al 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 algorithms that include priority dates, tiered systems, and recharge credits. For more information, uh, the, the, those involved with the RDC have published several um, articles in the a Western United States trade journal called The Water Report. You can also get uh, information at those web addresses at the bottom, idahowaterengineering.com and rechargedevelopment.com. Uh, where are eligible basins? If wells in a groundwater basin are now being regulated or are facing curtailment due to insufficient water supply and are approximate to a source of water that during some periods has excess flow, such as during spring runoff, and divert from an aquifer that is physically amenable to groundwater recharge, then we recommend a consultation. This is the different basins where RDC is, is, is working. I, I'm on the left on the East Bar, Eastern Snake Point Aquifer Recharge. Uh, then they also have other uh, basins working in Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. And when can it happen? It can happen any time we develop, but these are different recharge sites we've developed in, the, in Eastern Idaho. I was just, uh, just a couple of quick examples. Um, our soils in, we have either gravel, near the river we have gravelly soil where water infiltrates very, very rapidly, or in our desert areas it's a basalt formations, basalt that's fractured, so that it'll take the water quite rapidly. We have, so far we've developed several, a number of small sites, we're also using canals. Our season, our, our agriculture irrigation season only runs from May through the end of October, and really through September, and so in the off-season we can do, do MAR in the, in the canal system themselves. We have one example of a gravel pit where, where um, gravel had been removed in six hectares, and we're able to recharge 40,000 cubic meters per day in that site. We have another spot where there's a lava tube that goes from a volcano that goes into the ground, and we can do 12,000 cubic meters per day in that site. We're, out, we're working on two larger sites, It'll be a few years before we have them developed, but they would each do 500,000 cubic meters per day once they're, once they're established, if, if we can put it together as planned. RDC is now ready to assist implementation of incentivized managed aquifer recharge in basins internationally where groundwater uses are restricted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh Keith, for a very timely presentation. And uh, we have time for questions. There's one there. Uh, please stand up, uh, say your name, and. and uh, that, that's. That's a very good question. Can you repeat the oh, question? Oh, the question is what, the, uh, what water quality standards we have in our recharge scheme. Um, that, that, that definitely is an issue we have to consider. First off, I will say that our, waters, our water sources are, very, are relatively clean. We're not, it comes from the mountains, so we're starting with pretty clean water. Not, probably coliform bacteria would be the main thing to watch for. We, we have no regulation if we recharge into into ponds or canals or any place that has historically had water conveyed already. 
because if it hasn't contaminated the water in the last hundred years, it's not going to do it now. Okay. If we, and if we, and some of our locations are so remote, no one living near them that it's not an issue. But if we were to do a recharge system near, uh, near population where there's wells, we'd have to do monitoring with our Department of Environmental Quality. But we, but it isn't. It's more. It's more of a nuisance. It's not. Um, our soils filter this water out. It's 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 not a big problem, but we do have to be aware of it. Great, thanks, the gentleman there. The microphone's just coming behind you. Thank you, sir, for this uh, clear and interesting uh, presentation. My name is Ibrahim Al Turki from Saudi Arabia. Uh, we are a private company in water resources development. My question is: uh, uh, taking all the system that you talked about. How do you compare the, let's say, the average cost per cubic meter or acre foot of water delivered or pumped from these aquifer to alternatives? And could you give an estimate of uh, the cost of uh, a cubic meter or an, or an acre foot for this uh, big project you're talking about? Um, those are good questions. Historically, water has been very cheap in, in Idaho because the the water was considered free. The only thing the farmers would pay for is the conveyance or for the reservoirs. Uh, and so as we get into aquifer recharge, we have to do it as cheaply as possible. And so we're using, currently using systems that gravity flow to the recharge sites. Now, we have a lot of places where we could do more if we could pump the water and put it into the site. But, but currently, we're, the water we're conveying this year is $14 an acre foot which is pretty cheap. I don't know how to convert that to metric. Yeah. Okay, so you can do that, but it's, it, it's pretty cheap, actually. We have to keep our costs quite low. Okay, because you were so quick with your presentation, we have time for another. Okay. Thank you. Um, My name's Dan Good. I'm from Pennsylvania. You mentioned metering on the wells. Is there a... Um, like a third party that meters the recharge that somehow, you know, confirms that the water that you say you put in the ground doesn't just run off into the stream or something? That's a good question, too. The, the state provides regulation. They're the ones that require the meters to be put in. Um, as far as measurements, water that's used out of the rivers is measured by a, a, a water district, which is a state organization that the, the farmers run. Um, the water that we recharge, some of that is measured through by the water district. The, some of it we report, and so far they, ha they haven't, um, I don't know if they've done any audits, but we, we have to report specifically where we do it and what we've done. Um, as far as whether it returns to the river, that's, not, that's okay for us because um, what we want to do is capture the water during the runoff. If it returns to the river in, this, in August or through the winter, that's when we capture it again in another reservoir. So we don't really, it's, the state prefers that the recharge ha stays in the reservoir two or three years, but if it returns to the, ri to the river, that's not a big problem. Sorry. <laughs> um, but what about, you know, uh, loss? that the water you pump, I guess, or capture, some of it doesn't go into the ground, actually. Some of it is evaporated, evapotranspired. We don't, we don't consider that. Okay, thanks very much. Um, we'd better keep moving. Thank thanks very much, Keith. Very interesting presentation. I had the pleasure of visiting Idaho some years ago and with uh, some of your colleagues and, and uh, really interesting work being done on conjunctive water management there.